Today I'm going to talk about the one thing that can totally transform your photography and it has nothing to do with the gear you buy or the camera you have or anything else like that. Okay, so stick around. So what's the one thing that you should learn how to do as a photographer? You should be able to edit your images. Now, over I don't know, the last 10 years, you know, I started out shooting in JPEG and then switched over to RAW thanks to Eric because he's the one that told me when I bought his Canon 5D Mark II from him, he said, Shh, you know, you want to edit all the images you take. I used to just take pictures and hope they came out good. And then once I started shooting in RAW and I was using the photo editing program that came with my uh, camera, then I switched to Adobe Lightroom and the whole world of photography like changed for me when I learned how to edit my images. So when I look at the analytics of this YouTube channel, I see a lot of young photographers. The demographics um, of the videos that we put out, it shows us, you know, who's watching. And there's a lot of photographers that are, you know, in their 20s and early 30s that watch our videos. We have people that watch from, you know, 15 to 60, but the, the bulk are between, you know, like 25 and 50, and even more so the 25 to 35 year age. And I think that there's a lot of young photographers or people just getting into photography, and we get a lot of gear questions. What camera should I buy? You know, is this camera good? What's the best this? What's the best that? And it's all about gear. Today, I wanted to take a minute and talk about editing, because to me, that's more important than the gear and, you know, you need good gear, but it doesn't have to be the best of everything to make really, really great images. So as I'm talking in this video, I'm going to be dropping before and after photos in because I think I could take you into the computer and show you how editing works. But really, just a, a simple before and after shows you what you can do with an image. Whether you shoot in JPEG or RAW, I recommend RAW. There's always time to go afterwards and try to make your image the best that it can be, whether it's cropping or adjusting, you know, some of the saturation, the highlights, the shadows, and learning the tools inside of the editing program. I use Adobe Lightroom. Eric uses Adobe Lightroom. Most of my photography friends use Adobe Lightroom. You don't have to. There are other programs out there that are similar, but it's a non-destructive editing program. And if you go back into the early videos, there are a lot of tutorials that Eric and I did about using editing programs in Lightroom and how the controls work. But if you start editing as you're learning photography, it's a it it speeds up the process of becoming a better photographer. And so what do I mean by that? So now when I shoot, I'm not worried so much about getting the shot perfect in the camera because I've edited enough images to know what I can and can't do when I get into the computer. So if I can't make something perfect in camera, I know that I can probably get it the way I want it once I start editing. Because I'm so comfortable editing, the actual shooting process is better for me because I know before I click the shutter what I need to do to that image afterwards. And that's great when you're, when you're thinking about the finished photo before you even take it. It's changed how I shoot. Sometimes I have the wrong lens and I have to shoot really wide and I have to, I know I have to crop down a lot, but I know what my gear can let me do and I also know what I can do in the computer. So as you're looking and searching at cameras and lenses, and that's the fun part, shopping for all your gear that you want, one of the, the most important things is what are you going to do once you click the shutter? The picture's taken, now what are you going to do? Are you just going to upload it? Are you going to shoot in JPEG? Or are you going to take the time to learn how to edit, bring your image into the computer, and that's where you can be creative. I made a short 20 second video. It's sped up. But I wanted to show you a before and after. This was a firework shot I did in Disney World uh, a couple of years ago. And I just like this shot. There was a new firework show and the projections and there's a lot, of, there's a lot going on in this image. So I'm going to roll this as I'm talking. As you can see, the image is pretty dark to start, and within this, this is without being sped up, this is less than two minutes of editing time. So I know the editing program, I know what each tool is going to do, and I know the end result before I even start because I've taken the time over the years to really dig into all the tools in my editing software, and I can quickly edit my images now. I don't have to spend two hours ed editing one picture. You know, I, I don't use Photoshop almost hardly ever. Um, 
So you don't need to be proficient in that. It's great to know Photoshop and Photoshop is an amazing program that can do just about anything. But for general photography and working quickly with a lot of images, I find Adobe Lightroom to be the best. You know, it, it didn't take too long to edit that image and then I can move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And I end up with a really nice set of images, but I didn't have to spend hours and hours editing. Now, if you shoot a wedding and you have you know, 3,000 images to go through, editing can become a real burden and it can be, you know, hard. But that's how you define yourself as a photographer sometimes. You create your own look. And that doesn't happen in the camera always. A lot of times that happens after the fact. So some of these before and afters um, for a recent, from a recent trip, I, this morning shot I took was uh, just, you know, I got up early and went up to the top of my RV and took some pictures. And, you know, I knew it was kind of dark, but I knew I could bring the the colors into this image afterwards. This one of the Tree of Life in Disney World is a dark image also. And again, I know what my sensor can do in my camera and I know what I can bring out of these images in post-production. And this one, I mean, it's ridiculous how, how much light I brought into this just editing it. This would be a throwaway image if you took this and looked at it on the back of your camera and said, oh, this, this looks terrible. But because I've been doing this so long and I know what can be done afterwards, so I really, really think it's something worthwhile to spend the time learning. And there's a million, you know, find somebody you like to watch. If it's us, if it's a, another photographer who does editing tutorials. And there are so many different ways to use the same tools inside of these programs to, you know, just really create art, basically. Photographic art. You can do whatever you want with this. One of my favorite images is this one here. Now, there, there's a lot going on in this image as far as, like, technical stuff. I mean, I this is a long exposure shot um, with a telephoto lens, and I knew I was going to blur all the people, but I wanted to capture some people standing still. So I waited until the photographer had posed this couple here, and I knew they would be still in an image of motion. But then afterwards, I was able to really get creative with it by using different tools inside of Lightroom to desaturate everything around them and to bring a little more light to where they are and to crop the image the way I needed it. So it was kind of a cool image to start with, but it really let me finish it and make it look, you know, just the way I wanted. I'm going to put uh, a couple of cards here on either side of me while I'm talking. And these, if you click on them, this one's our Lightroom tutorial. And then this one will be the you know, getting started with Lightroom. And these should really help you, you know, get up and running. It's I know it's daunting and there's a lot of tools inside there and it can be overwhelming when you're trying to learn photography at the same time, but it's worth it to do.